I need more power. These four words uttered are ones spoken by a being of great perseverance, and one whose entire being is focused around it. The Dark Slayer, the Alpha and the Omega, Virgil. Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's history of breakdown and analysis, we will be talking about a son of Sparta, Virgil, and understand why not only is he a very important face in the series of Devil May Cry, but what exactly makes him tick. What makes Virgil, Virgil? Now, before we can talk about Virgil properly, we must first touch on his father, Sparta, as he is a very important figure in the universe of Devil May Cry. Approximately 2,000 years before the events of the first game, a war had erupted out in the underworld between two powerful demons. The first was the usurping demon prince, Mundus, and another known as Argusax. This battle would spill out into the realm of man, with many falling to a conflict they played no part in. And it's here was Sparta's resolve would be born. Although he was the at the time right hand man of Mundus, he found the demon's desire for conquest and destruction distasteful, and Foss pushed back against him and his army. It was Sparta and Sparta alone that defeated Mundus and his army, and imprisoned him on Mallet Island. But to somewhat guarantee that his army wouldn't attempt to free him, he would separate the demon world from the mortal plane, using his own blood, as well as that of a priestess, his own demon sword, an amulet, and a tower were known as the Teme Negru. Sparta was successful in sealing off the demon world, and by doing so, the human world would flourish. In Sparta's later years, he would fall in love with a human by the name of Ava, and together the two would settle in Redgrave, with Ava giving birth to a pair of twins, one by the name of Dante, and the other by the name of Virgil. Now growing up, Virgil and Dante were extremely competitive with each other. No matter what it was, it was always a competition between the two. They were eternal rivals with each other, growing up, and the rivalry would only intensify as they would train under their father, at least until he mysteriously disappeared. Now, it's also around this time where Virgil had grown a fondness for poetry. Loving how literature could express one's feelings in a very articulate manner, Virgil would dive through poetry book to poetry book until he came across that of William Blake's, someone he grew very fond of as his writing really did speak to Virgil. Now, after indulging in poems with a fellow gentleman in Redgrave, the old elderly man would in fact give him a book consisting of all of Blake's poems, something that Virgil was in fact eternally grateful for. This meant a lot to Virgil than many had perceived, as it is a book he would hold on to for the rest of his life. Now, although their father, Sparta, had disappeared, Ava would continue to raise them as a single mother, giving them each two halves of an amulet their father had left behind. Ava saw this as a way for them to remember their father, despite him no longer being around. But unfortunately, the sins of the father would catch up to them. With Sparta are now gone, they were left vulnerable, and eventually the family would be attacked by demons. This would occur whilst Virgil was outside the house playing, so not only did he bear witness to watching his home burn to the ground, but he was brutally attacked by demons who stabbed him repeatedly and ran their blades red with his blood. Terrified, battered and hurt, once Virgil saw what had become of his beloved home, something within him snapped. His demonic blood would rush through his veins, and upon clutching the Yamato in front of him, he slayed all that stood before him. Not a single demon survived this attack, and after returning back home and seeing that the house was abandoned, these events would give birth to his own philosophy of power. You see, after killing the demons, Virgil felt alone and slightly betrayed, as his mother never came for him after the fire. Unbeknownst to Virgil, she'd actually died in the attack. And because of this, he felt somewhat lost. But instead of wallowing in his sorrow, Virgil used this pain and anger to motivate himself to become something more. Embracing his demonic heritage, he believed that by honing his skills and acquiring more power, he could protect himself and what he cared about. Taking up his father's blade, the Yamato, he would begin to travel the world, learning of his heritage and honing his skills. By embracing his demonic bloodline, Virgil's strength grew day by day, but by relinquishing his human self, Virgil in turn became very cold and callous, believing that by doing so he could live up to the legend of his father and possibly surpass it. Devil May Cry 4 During Virgil's pursuit of Sparta's power, he would quickly learn of the city of Fortuna, catching word that the so-called Order of Light worshipped Sparta and how he had defeated Mundus. Now he would travel to Fortuna, believing that he could obtain more power by doing so, but upon observing the Order at work, he believed that they were rather foolish and misguided with how they were 
warship Sparta, and Foss left shortly after arriving. But this was not before he had spent a few nights there, and shared an evening with a woman from Fortuna. She in turn would in fact later go on to give birth to his son Nero, something Virgil was completely unaware of to a much later date. Devil May Cry 3 Now before the events of the third game, which chronologically is the first game of the series, there was in fact a prequel comic book series, serving as a bit of a bridge and introduction to Virgil's character. Now Virgil's pursuit of power would have him cross paths with an old man by the name of Arkham. Being familiar with the Sparta bloodline as well as the power that Virgil searched for, he offered his services to assist him. Now while suspicious of Arkham's ulterior motives, he could not deny that he needed assistance and Foss learned of how to obtain more power. You see, the amulets he and Dante possessed were in fact keys to the underworld and to undo the seal, he would have to raise the demonic tower the Teme Negru and finally obtain the divinity he'd longed for. But of course, in order to do this, first he would have to track down his brother, something that really excited Virgil. It got his blood going as the two had not crossed paths in a very long time. And whilst the years had passed by, Virgil in a way still saw his brother as his eternal rival. Now as Arkham searches for the seals to raise the Teme Negru, Virgil would finally cross paths with Dante, but was sadly unimpressed with his brother, having not embraced his demonic heritage like him, and instead his humanity. He still does however challenge his brother to a fight, but he is quickly disappointed as Virgil swiftly beats him and tears the amulet from his neck. But instead of taking it, he throws it back at Dante, remarking that he could take it back at any point he wanted to. So after Dante's defeat, the Teme Negru ritual begins and the tower is raised. During the events of the third game, once the tower is raised, Virgil is well aware that he's definitely caught his brother's attention. And although their interaction was very brief, Virgil knows that Dante's humanity is what will ultimately be his drive to stop him. So the Dark Slayer would bind his time at the top of the tower, waiting for his brother's arrival. And much like clockwork, Dante arrives as expected, but once again Virgil proves to be too much for him, remarking that might controls everything, and without strength you cannot protect anything, not even yourself. He says this as he drives the Yamato and finally the rebellion through Dante's chest, and after this claim his half of the amulet. Now much to his surprise, upon plunging the rebellion into Dante's chest, he realises that he may have in fact inadvertently set off Dante's devil trigger, preparing for a fight once again, he readies his blade. But before a real fight can begin, he is interrupted by Arkham, snapping him out of his battle trance and reminds him to focus on the bigger picture. As Virgil and Arkham travel deeper within the tower, Virgil finally reveals to Arkham that he's aware of the old man's pursuit of his father's power. Knowing that he would at one point betray him, it is Virgil that pulls the trigger first, killing Arkham where he stands. Upon entering the final chamber to enter the demon realm, he'd be found by one of of its gatekeepers, the Beowulf mistaking his scent for Dante as he is blind. He would attack Virgil, but is quickly gutted by the swordsman, and in turn transforms into a devil arm. Now unfortunately for Virgil, he has no luck in opening up the demon realm, as he's once again interrupted, this time by Dante, and then by Lady, and finally Arkham, who reveals that he does have some demonic powers of his own. You see, Arkham's plan all along was to bring them all here, so he could use the blood of the sons of Sparta, the blood of the descendant of the priest that being Lady, the twin amulets, and finally the Teme Negru itself to open up the Neverrealm. After doing so, he quickly dispatches of the weakened trio and continues to move forward in order to obtain Sparta's power. Now, at this point, Virgil is understandably furious, and whilst he may wish to obtain his father's power, he does wish to kill Arkham just as bad. So he would tell his brother's footsteps in the underworld and make his presence known once Arkham obtained the Force Edge and loses control of its incredible power. Instead of allowing Dante to take all of the glory, the two do team up together and destroy Arkham's corrupted state, separating his physical being from the Force Edge. But before there could be a brief moment of recovery, Virgil immediately darts off after the sword, not wanting to let his ambitions erode. So this once again causes the two brothers to clash, but this time it is Virgil that loses. Unable to somewhat accept his loss or desire to return back to the mortal plane, he allows himself 
himself to fall into the deep pits of the underworld, whilst Dante himself returns back to the mortal plane. But things aren't exactly over. Upon landing in the nether realm, he comes face to face with Mundus, proclaiming that if my father can do it, so can I, and he runs off to destroy the demon prince, wanting to follow in his father's footsteps. Unfortunately for Virgil, he does lose this fight, and it's here where the downfall of the character really does start, as after he's defeated by Mundus, the Yamato is shattered and he is tortured and enslaved under the demon prince. Mundus takes a deep form of satisfaction in breaking the son of Sparta, and eventually Virgil falls under his control, becoming a Nello Angelo. So this brings us up to our first game in the series, Devil May Cry. Virgil returns on Mallet Island, but as established under the Nello Angelo persona, ripped off his memories and control, he is nothing more than a puppet of Mundus, who is once again attempting to claim control of the mortal plane. But before he gets right to it, he does attempt to first exact his revenge by killing the final son of Sparta, Dante. Wanting to somewhat add insult to injury, he pits him not only against his corrupted brother, but also against a demon by the name of Trish, who visually is a replica of their mother, Ava. Now, during Dante's quest to destroy Mundus, Virgil was forced to attack his own brother. In their first battle, Virgil almost kills Dante, but upon recognizing his amulet, Virgil's memories come flooding back, and it sends him into a hysterical state, with Virgil still attempting to push back against Mundus' control, but alas he's unable to be freed of it. The two share one more confrontation, with this time Virgil removing his helmet, possibly in the hopes that his brother may recognise him, but Dante is unable to. It's only upon Nilo Angelo's defeat and spontaneous combustion, where Virgil was freed of Mundus' control and recognised who Nello Angelo is, as the only thing left behind was his half of the amulet. After this point, Virgil would disappear from the public eye, terroring between life and death, things were not looking good for Virgil, so he would remain in hiding, finding his time for his return, and the power he needed in order to do so. Of course, as this was going on, Dante would continue forward to defeat Mundus, and later travel to Fortuna himself, foiling a plan the Order of Light had put together, with assistance from a young man named Nero. So this brings us up to our current installment in the series, Devil May Cry 5. Years would pass by after the events of Fortuna, and Nero had caught his attention. Sensing that his devil bringer arm had absorbed the Yamato, he would turn his sights on the young man. Catching him off guard, Virgil would tear off Nero's devil bringer and transform it into the Yamato, reaching his limits. He would use the Yamato to travel to Redgrave, to the ruins of what he used to call home for his rebirth. After years of lying dormant, Virgil had finally cobbled together a plan. Knowing that the Yamato was used to separate the world of man from demon, he wished to use the blade's abilities on himself in order to separate demon from man, always considering his human side to be his weaker half. Virgil plunged the Yamato deep into his heart, and in turn separated himself into two different beings, the first being Urizen, and the second being V. Urizen is the physical being and perception of what Virgil sees as power, hence his monstrous appearance and incredible strength. V, on the other hand, is physically weaker and a somewhat capsule of all the trauma that Virgil accumulated during his time and service service under Mundus. This is in turn why V can summon Griffin and Shadow, bosses and puppets of Mundus from Devil May Cry 1, and a being literally called Nightmare, the physical manifestation of Virgil's pain as Nello Angelo. Now whilst Eurozin and V are very different, they do share one ambition, and that is also their desire for power, something that would become an important factor later on. Now Virgil is largely absent in the story, but his Eurozin counterpart gets his hands dirty. Learning of how Mundus acquired power by summoning a Clyphot tree, and ate the fruit that flourished from it. Urizen would use the Clyphot to obtain the power that Virgil yearned for, but even when the demon did acquire it, he was still no match for Dante. Just before he could be killed, it is V that stops Dante, wanting to deal the finishing blow himself. Now whilst V didn't keep his own identity as Virgil's humanity a secret, expressing Virgil's regrets for many of his actions, his thirst for power was just as strong as Urizen's, forced to end his own suffering as well as the demons, he would drive his cane through the heart of Eurozone, uniting both sides once more. So Virgil was reborn, but this time with the power that Eurozone had consumed from the Clyphot. Dante immediately attacks his brother, knowing the threat that Virgil possesses, but the Dark Slayer is immediately able to shake off this attack, overpowering his brother. Seeing him as somewhat unworthy in his current state, he requests that Dante
Dante heals from his wounds. Beating him like this means nothing. From here, Virgil would retreat to the top of the Clifot, patiently waiting for his brother's arrival. But whilst looking down, Virgil begins to question his journey, showing that whilst he may resent his humanity, it's just as much a part of him as his demon side. Now the sons of Sparta come face to face once again, with Dante needing the Yamato to undo the damage Virgil has done. But as expected, this is not something Virgil will give up willingly, and the two brothers clash once more, with neither gaining the upper hand. It's also here where Virgil learns from Dante that Nero is in fact his son. Whilst definitely surprised, he doesn't allow this to fluster him, choosing to focus on the matter at hand. And as the two prepare to deal the finishing blow, they are interrupted by Nero, who has successfully awakened his own devil trigger. Both surprised and intrigued by Nero's own power, Virgil challenges Nero to fight in Dante's stead, and the father and son cross blades, with Virgil being blown away by Nero's incredible power. Accepting the defeat at the hands of his son, he would respect his end of the deal. So he, alongside Dante, travel down to the Nether Realm in order to cut down the Clifot tree, in turn sealing it off from the mortal realm. But this isn't before Virgil shows a very brief moment of somewhat affection and respect towards Nero. Throwing at his feet the William Blake book he owned, he asks Nero to hold on to it, as he won't be losing next time. So it does serve as a memento and way for Nero to remember Virgil, as they will be sealed on the other side. With the demon world now cut off, the two brothers spar with each other, with both being fairly stubborn about who has the upper hand. You see, despite the intense battle they've had over the years, they've always cared for each other. Their sibling rivalry will always go on, as the two battle the denizens of hell together, protecting the world of man side by side, much to Virgil's annoyance. Now the special edition of Devil May Cry 5 does have a slightly altered version of this ending, where Virgil is successful in defeating Dante. He is, however, much like the original story, unsuccessful in defeating Nero. So once again, Virgil and Dante travel to the underworld, where they do fight the denizens of hell. But in this ending, Virgil's far more blunt and callous towards his brother, opposing to the game's original ending, where he is seemingly more playful. Nonetheless, the two get to work, and this is seemingly the end of the tale for the Sons of Sparta. And like that, this has been it for the history of Virgil. I do hope you have enjoyed this and learnt more by doing so. I honestly really, really did have an incredible time putting this one together. Thank you very much for sitting around for the end of this. It's not your typical fighting game content from me, but Devil May Cry is a very special game to me. It has actively made me a fan of the series, so I hope I was able to share a little bit of my love for the incredible series with the rest of you. As of right now, I'm considering this a somewhat one and done. However, depending on this video's reception, and Amon, I wouldn't honestly mind talking about other characters in the series, as there's just so much to touch on and discuss. If you are interested, please support the video with a thumbs up, and a comment is always appreciated. Let me know what you want, and I'm more than happy to provide the content. But until then, that has been it for me. So before we wrap things up, if possible, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. And please do not forget to tick that bell, as it will keep you up to date with all of my content. So now, as always, please comment, like, subscribe, and share this video everyone you know. Please take care and I'll see you all next time.